Hey guys, it's Chris. From the lost tomb of Antony and Cleopatra to strange objects that we have no idea what they are, here are 10 of some of the biggest archaeological mysteries in the world. Number 10. The Tomb of Antony and Cleopatra Sometimes the strangest things in the world are objects that you think should have been found at this point in time but haven't yet. Thus is the perplexing mystery that is the tomb of Antony and Cleopatra. Cleopatra was of course the ruler of Egypt, and Mark Antony was one of the men who helped rule Rome, though Julius Caesar was the true ruler until his assassination when Mark Antony took over. And that was all during Rome's prime. The two fell in love together and even had children. But after their ally and Julius Caesar's adopted son Octavian betrayed them, it all went downhill. They lost a key battle at Actium. And to prevent Octavian from getting a hold of them and parading them around, which was a Roman custom at the time, so Antony and Cleopatra committed suicide. Here's the mystery, though. It's stated in many writings, including one done by Plutarch, that the two were buried together and that the place they were kept was very lavish. The exact position of the tomb is unknown, though, and it has remained that way for thousands of years. Given the many archaeological booms that Egypt has had in recent decades, it has struck many as strange that their tomb has not been found. Not that there haven't been many, many attempts to find it, though, and many TV shows and movies talking about finding it, including the recent CBS event series Blood and Treasure, which focused on the hunt for Cleopatra's sarcophagus after the burial place was found and ransacked. Whether it will ever be found is very much up for debate. So where do you think it is? Number 9. How many dinosaurs were there? If you were asked how we know dinosaurs exist, the obvious answer would be to point to all the fossils that have been found of the creatures over the many years we've been around. These fossils are the texts that help scientists fill the libraries of what the world of dinosaurs were like. But by that very token, we acknowledge that we still know very little about the world of dinosaurs because not every dinosaur left a fossil. In terms of numbers, millions of fossils have been found in the Earth, with many more still waiting to be discovered more than likely. However, the process of fossilization itself is rare in creatures, and only a certain amount ever undergo the transformation that leaves them as bone in the ground. What's more, the process of fossilization often leaves the bones or other parts of the dinosaurs broken or altered, which means that they can be misidentified or misconstrued as something else. Not unlike how the Velociraptor species were once felt to be very tall, as presented in the Jurassic Park movies, when actually they were about the size of chickens. So given all of that, even with the wide range of fossils and proof that many different species of dinosaur existed, the possibility of new dinosaurs being out there waiting to be discovered, or there having been dinosaurs we'll never find out about is all still very valid. This is the curious and profound mystery, because if there are potentially dozens or maybe even hundreds of species of dinosaur and other prehistoric creatures that were alive in prehistoric times and we don't know about them, any one of them could radically change our preconception of prehistoric life. It's for that reason that scientists and archaeologists continue to dig into what prehistoric times were like, both with the dinosaurs and before them, just so we can potentially answer this mystery. Number 8. The Jar with Built-in Holes If you go to the Museum of Ontario Archaeology, you'll find a clay jar that was intentionally made with holes in it. Not one hole just at the top, mind you, but rather holes littered throughout the jar itself. Weirdly, the jar when found was actually shattered and had to be reassembled, which led to the discovery of its unique form. Just as odd is that no one is exactly sure where the jar came from. It was found in an area near a crater in World War II, and it was in a storage room full of artifacts from Iraq in the city of Ur. But despite knowing that, it's unlike any jar ever found and no one can place its origin or creator. The curators at the Ontario Museum even went and talked to other experts of other cultures to see if they recognized the style or the form or even the origin point, but no one could give them a true answer. Everyone's stumped by it, Katie Urban, one of the researchers at the London Ontario Museum told Live Science. We've been sending it around to all sorts of Roman pottery experts and other pottery experts, and no one seems to be able to come up with an explanation. 
It's very likely that the jar is one of a kind, which is why there aren't any like it that have been found from the time period or beyond. But that still raises the question, why would anyone make a jar that has holes in it? And we may never find out the answer. Number 7. Roman Dodecahedrons The Roman Empire left many artifacts for people to find, but easily one of the strangest are the Roman Dodecahedrons. These are nothing but tiny objects comprised of pentagons, with protrusions coming out of every corner where the pentagons are connected. The pentagon shapes all have holes within them. They're very small, and they usually range between 3 and 10 centimeters in length. Despite all of these factors, there seems to have been a clear purpose for them. I say this because many archaeologists have found these Roman dodecahedrons all over Europe, and they date back to 200 to 300 AD. So what were they used for? Many have tried to answer that question, and with no clear answers. Some suspect a very simple home use, while others suspect it could have been used in a religious sense. And both seem feasible. Except no pictures or references to the Roman dodecahedrons have been made in the various Roman texts from that time. Weirdly, a man with a 3D printer made one of the Roman dodecahedrons and did some testing on his own and made the conclusion that it could have been a tool used for knitting and made a YouTube video showcasing this belief. Regardless of whether this fact is true or not, the speculation on this item will continue. And now for number 6. But first, have you subscribed yet? If you haven't, make sure to click that big red subscribe button. Help us get to 2 million subscribers. I think we can do it. Number 6. The Jigsaw Mummies in the Scottish Highlands in the early part of the 2000s, a dig was going on under a Bronze Age settlement that existed 3,000 years ago. As they dug deeper, they found two skeletons, a male and a female, and both of them were very well preserved. However, as they continued to observe the bodies, something felt very wrong with the bones. There were some that stuck out as odd, such as the woman's jawbone being bigger than it should have been and a few other inconsistencies. So to figure out what was going on, they took DNA from various bones on both bodies and then had them tested. When the results came back, it was discovered that they were looking at two skeletons, but they were comprised of bones from six different people. Someone had taken the bones of these people and then placed them in specific order to resemble two complete skeletons, and then buried them in a ritualistic way. After finding this out, it was discovered that the reason for the bones being in such great condition is that they were put into a peat bog, which is known to preserve the human body. So it's believed that whoever did this weird jigsaw puzzle put the original bodies into the bog and then fished them out later. And only then did he get the bones and arrange them as such. But why someone would go through such trouble is very much unknown. Was this the work of a serial killer and thus more jigsaw mummies like this are waiting to be found? Was it some sort of ritual? And why was this particular collection put into a peat bog to be preserved? That and more mysteries are waiting to be solved in regard to these mummies. Number 5. The Copper Scroll Treasure When the Dead Sea Scrolls were found, there was another hidden treasure along with it. A copper scroll, one that had a lot of text written onto it. The Copper Scroll was discovered in 1952 in Qumran, and after dating it, it was found to be 2,000 years old. What makes the Copper Scroll so valuable to archaeologists, though, is that a treasure of some kind is described by the scroll and is supposed to lead the reader right to it. The problem, though, is that the scroll doesn't give the proper location. And what's more, it's very likely that whatever clues are within the scroll have long since been lost to the passage of time over these two millennia, such as landmarks, cities, and other such clues that such a map would have, which begs the obvious question. What treasure is the Copper Scroll pointing to? That's another mystery that hasn't been solved yet, but you could venture a guess to what it is, due to the times in which the scroll was made. 2,000 years ago, the Roman Empire controlled the areas around Qumran with an iron fist. It's believed that the people of the area hid a great treasure so that the Romans couldn't get to it, and made the scroll so that if they were lost or killed, the ones who found it would be able to locate the treasure. Whatever the case, unless one of the clues are found or discovered, the treasure that it may be pointing to is likely lost to time, and thus the mystery of what it led to and what was to be discovered remains. Number 4. Arrowheads I want you to picture the entirety of archaeological finds. What do you think are some of the most numerous things that have been found? Bones is an obvious answer, but in regard to the Stone Age, 
arrowheads are one of the most popular and numerous things that have been found. And they've been found all over the world. And as such, they paint a picture of what the Stone Age must have been like in terms of hunting and tools and so on and so forth. And as is the human way, once a picture is painted, it's hard to question what is known. Except when two anthropologists of the University of Wyoming decided to ask the most basic of questions. Why did these Stone Age people use arrowheads? The concept that projectile points were used to advance human hunting has been perpetrated throughout history, but wasn't based on any meaningful evidence, they said. And as they dove into the question itself, more inconsistencies about the picture that was painted arose. For example, it takes a much longer time to make an arrowhead than it does to make a sharpened stick. And a sharpened stick can do a lot of damage when put into a bow and fired upon. The question got so big that they decided to ask the Mythbusters to do tests to see if any of their questions could be answered. And during their episode, the Mythbusters found that sharpened sticks were indeed deadly, and that the arrowheads only slightly added more penetration and only a little more of an open wound. To that end, they postulated that because wood decays and stone doesn't, we don't know how many Stone Age people used arrowheads and which preferred sharpened sticks. So while some new information has come forward, the question still remains. What led to the Stone Age people making arrowheads in the first place? Number 3. Rongo Rongo Writings In the 19th century, when explorers found what would soon be called Easter Island, they found a series of tablets with ancient glyphs on them. These would be called the Rongo Rongo Writings, or Rongo Rongo for short. There were over two dozen of these writings found on Easter Island during its exploration. Most of these were on pieces of wood of varying degrees of damage. Many believe that the Rongo Rongo writings are a history of the ancient people that lived and died on Easter Island. And to that end, many have attempted to try and decipher the clues and glyphs that are on the etchings. But to this day, none have been able to crack the code, if there is even a code at all. Due to the mysterious nature of the people of Easter Island, some aren't even sure it's a type of writing at all even saying it to be proto-writing, which would make it even harder to identify. The few things that researchers have gotten is that they feel due to the scarcity of the Rongo Rongo writings that only a few select people on the island were allowed to write, which would line up with certain findings, such as the chieftain's staff having the writing on it, or a religious birdman statue having it. Number 2. The Mayan Remains One of the most mysterious groups of people to ever live were the ones known as the Maya. They were a group of people that ruled Mesoamerica for many centuries and have left their mark on the world via things like their cities, their infamous calendar, which said the world would end in 2012, by the way, and their rituals and sacrifices and even more. But the biggest impact they left by far is the mystery and debate about where they all went. Despite being masters in writing, agriculture, construction, and more, the Mayans just vanished off the face of the earth leaving their cities, artifacts, and more just laying around waiting to be discovered. And discovered they were. But the more that we found, the more that we debated what really happened to them. If there was a bloody conflict that wiped them out, there's not a single sign of it. If it was a disease, there's no clue as to where it came from and where the people themselves went after being infected. If there was some kind of internal struggle, their writings don't document it. This truly is a case where the mystery lies in the not knowing and not being sure where to look for clues. To this day, people still debate where the Mayans left, and why they left at the peak of their power, and why they left so much behind. Number 1. The Pyramids of Giza The Pyramids of Giza are one of the most marvelous man-made structures on Earth. The Great Pyramid of Giza was made in the 4th dynasty of Egypt back in 2580 BC, and it took 20 years to make. But herein lies the question and the problem. How did the ancient Egyptians make a structure millennia before many of the modern machines and devices that were used to make modern marvels? Since the question has been posed, there have been many who have sought answers. And many of those answers have been plausible, including a slowly building theory about the use of ramps, moats, and more to get the stones into place. But even with some of the questions possibly answered, there are still many more to be figured out such as how they were able to perfectly fit the stones so they would not only stay in place, but line up perfectly with the shape of the pyramid. There's also the fact that the Great Pyramid of Giza is 481 feet tall, and that would take a lot of effort even with ramps and moats to get it all made. 
Plus, there's the issue of labor. For many years, we thought that the pyramids were built using slave labor, but recent archaeological finds may have proven otherwise. Remains of a nearby camp used by workers had trash heaps filled with animal bones. That combined with testing of remains proved that the workers ate meat and were likely very well fed. This is by and large one of the great archaeological mysteries. And though pieces to the puzzle may have been found, many wonder if all the pieces will ever truly be discovered. Thanks for watching. What did you think of these mysteries of archaeology? Do you wonder why some of these things have happened, or why they aren't answered yet? Do you maybe think you have an answer to one of these mysteries? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to World List, and I'll see you next time.